Well, good day, everyone. Welcome to our devotion for this morning. We are looking at this wonderful book of Philippians. We're in chapter 1, and I want to focus on a theme that I'm sure many of us experience, and that is the theme of adversity. And we are looking at the whole theme of joy in this opening chapter, how we can enjoy life and how we can indeed experience joy even in adversity. And Paul understood that and he writes in uh, Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 12 he writes, But I want you to know, brothers, that the things that happened to me actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear through the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I've been put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. So, yeah, Paul speaks of the things that had happened in his life. And we to know what those things were, we'd have to read Acts 20 to 28. But he gives his own summary in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 27. And he writes this, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Wow, what a resume that Paul had. Paul's greatest desire was to preach the gospel. And for decades he had traveled from city to city, preaching in marketplaces and synagogues, one-on-one, -on -one, sharing the good news, establishing churches and building up the new converts. That was his life, and he gave himself to it unconditionally. And towards the end of his life, he was arrested in Jerusalem, and he spent two years in a prison in Caesarea. And then he was shipped off to Rome. You can read all about this in the book of Acts, where he spent another two years in prison. How could he pursue the call of God locked away in a jail cell? His desire had always been to go to Rome as a preacher, and he ended up going as a prisoner. And so in the midst of his disappointment and adversity, Paul found a way to drink from another well, the well of joy. And I often wonder about the trials and the setbacks, the disappointments we face. We could make a long list of them. Uh, some of us have known what it is like to have lost a child whom we thought we would see grow up, to have laid rest a parent whom we thought would watch their grandchildren grow up, to face some debilitating disease which threatens to take a life before you're really ready to give it up, to lose a spouse or some other loved one with whom you expected to, to walk a, a long journey, to face losing a secure job that you'd expected to provide for you until your retirement, to have a friendship you had leaned on and been uh, and nurtured and suddenly it, it lies in ashes, to have a child who has become wayward and just broken your heart through their rebellion, to have some kind of financial struggle that you've wondered if you could ever recover from, 
to have a marriage partner suddenly leave you, to be betrayed by those that you trusted, and a number of other midlife issues, um, just to, to you know, mention a few, the list could go on. And the, the question really is, can God take these kinds of circumstances and, and work them for good? Can God take these kinds of issues and, and still bring joy into our lives? Can he, can he work in our lives in the same way that he worked in Paul's life? Can we consider it joy, as, as James says in James 1, when we face trials of, of many kinds? And most of us know what it's like to be so deep in a situation that we cannot see God at work in it. And certainly no way to see blessing in it. And only after time has, has passed and it has become more distant that we can perhaps look back on and, 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 and say, now, now I can see how God worked blessing out of disaster. But at the time I certainly couldn't see it. Perhaps there are some of you this morning, even after years have gone by, who, who still struggle to see God's hand in those things. And it may be that one of the reasons we do not see God at work in our trials, in our pain, in our disappointments, is that we don't know where to look. I've used this illustration before, but I think it really highlights the point of the econom economist who had been asked to address a group of university professors about the looming recession in the country. And certainly we know about that because we seem to be entering one right now. And to explain its long-term effects. And she walked up to the wall and a large piece of white paper. She took a pen out of her pocket, walked over and made a small back black dot right in the middle of the paper. She turned to the audience and asked them what they saw. And one after the other, they responded almost irritably. You know, we, we see a small black dot. And then she said, yes, there is a small black dot. But not one of you said, I see a large sheet of white paper. That concludes my speech. I think that's quite profound because sometimes we are so close to a thing that all we see is the small black dot, the pain, and we do not see the bigger picture. Where do you look to find God's handiwork, his fingerprints in the midst of trials? Paul helps to show us some of those places. And if we read up to verse 18, as we did, we can see some of the places where we, we see God in the midst of our trials. One of the places you look to find God at work when there's disappointment and trial is in those places where God is able to advance the gospel through your circumstances. And sometimes that is hard to grasp. We need to remember that from the time sin entered his it, it into God's creation. God has been at work in bringing people separated from him back into relationship with him. And that has been God's divine purpose all along. The question is, how can God use my circumstances to further his plan of salvation or to, to, to do his work in me, to change me from the inside? That would surely be a cause for rejoicing to know that God can even use our pain and our trials to accomplish his purposes. And so Paul says in verse 12, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has served to advance the gospel. So in what way is the gospel being advanced in your life through whatever adversity you're going through? And as we mentioned, sometimes when you're too close to something, you, you can't really see God's hand in it. But maybe we need to step back and just look to God and ask him what is it that he's working in our life through whatever we're going through. And we're going to look at this a little closer, especially this whole phrase, advancing the gospel, and see how God advanced the gospel through Paul's circumstances, and indeed how he can do that through our own. And on that note, we close this morning. Have a great day. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you that you're in our circumstances. We know that favorite verse that God works in all things for the good of those who love him 
And sometimes when we're too close to those circumstances, we don't recognize that. But Lord, even through the words and that we have read this morning from Paul's own experience, may we know that you're at work in and through our lives and that you will indeed bring about good through whatever we're going through. And so we just pray that we might keep our eyes on you and that we might step back and just put our trust in you. And so we just thank you for this day. We just pray that your blessing would be upon us and our loved ones as we go into this weekend, Lord. May we continue to live our lives for your glory uh, and to honor you in all that we do. We pray your blessing on us now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.